you can see in the news reports and on social media, people are like, oh, I was in the area or I saw a guy running. We want those people to call the police. We, we need to interview these people. Active investigation. Howland police are piecing together what led up to a deadly shooting last night. It's been more than 24 hours since that shooting in Howland. Five people were shot. Two of the victims are dead. This is a story that WKBN has been following since it broke on Saturday afternoon. Police arrested this man, Nasser Hamad. He is charged with two counts of aggravated murder. He's also charged with three counts of attempted aggravated murder. Tonight, he is in the Trumbull County Jail. First News also did check in with the Trumbull County Jail today to see if there would be a court appearance. We also checked in with Warren Municipal Court for that court date. Right now, that information is not available to us. We do have some new video that you're going to see only on WKBN. Arna Jean Grimley outside of the Howland Police Department last night as Nasser Hamad was taken to the Trumbull County Jail after all that uh, shooting activity and talking with police. New today, though, we are learning more about all the shooting victims. Howland Police released their names. Their ages range from 17 to 43 years old. 20-year-old Joshua Williams was shot and killed last night. His family called our newsroom and I had a chance to talk with him on the phone. The family did give us permission to use this picture of Joshua on air. The other victim is a 19-year-old male found dead at the scene. Police haven't released his name yet, though, because they're still trying to contact his family. Police do tell WKBN that 43-year-old April Trent was hit by gunfire. So was 20-year-old Bryce Hendrickson. Both had surgery last night. We have also learned that a 17-year-old was grazed by gunfire, but investigators are not releasing the teen's name. The shooting investigation, it is just in the beginning stages, and the Trumbull County Homicide Unit is working the case with Howland Police. Today, First News sat down with Howland's police chief to learn exactly what happened last night. 27 First News reporter Lindsay Watson live in studio with that story tonight, new at 11 o'clock. A lot of moving pieces with this um, and a lot happening over the last 32 hours too. Right, everything last night was changing minute by minute and really over the span of today, it's been changing sure. hour by hour. So obviously we have a ton of information to recap right now. And since last night, I stayed in contact with police gathering the most recent information and up to date information as it became available. Since this story broke, several new pieces of the investigation have come to light while some questions still remain unanswered. Toronto County 911, where's your emergency? Just after 4.30 Saturday afternoon, crews were called to this gray house on Niles Cortland Road. Callers flooded the Trumbull County 911 Dispatch Center to report what they saw from the road and across the street as the altercation and shooting happened. A guy came out of the house and was shooting at the van with the woman in it and a bunch of kids. This guy knows how to shoot. This wasn't a gangster shooting sideways or anything. He was right on. Investigators say this stemmed from a family dispute. Hallen Police Chief Nick Roberts tells WKBN the shooting is a result of one of the passengers in the van being angry at Nasser Hamad for dating his mother. Bryce is the son who was upset because she is now dating Nasser Hamad and has left her husband. Officials say April Trent drove all five victims to Hamad's house to confront him about the ongoing dispute. The situation then escalated from a physical confrontation to Hamad firing shots at their van. Investigators are aware of talk on social media before the shooting. I can't really speculate on exactly what they went, what their intentions were when they went there, but I do know that there was a confrontation in the driveway. Police say they have been called to this house in the past, and this isn't the first time they've had to deal with an issue between Hamad and his girlfriend's children. Neighbors also said they have seen police at this house before, but were shocked when they heard the gunfire and sirens that followed. Well, I know the one kid has caused trouble before. And she saw that the guy ran after he shot the person, and then the little kid was running around in her yard covered in blood. And investigators are still trying to figure out how all five of those people that were in the van that drove over to Hamad's house are connected. Yeah, and so, of course, you heard the police chief talking. Anyone with any information, they want you to go ahead and give them a call. Uh, you need to talk to a lot of people. That was a busy area, so want to hear from anyone if they were out there. And, of course, we have all those numbers for you on WKBN.com. 
Lindsay, thanks so much for all of your coverage of this story. Thanks so much, Joel. All right, and you can count on WKBN to keep following this major local story. You can listen to some of those 911 calls and see all of our coverage from the scene. All you have to do is log on to WKBN.com.